Eight Sins That Will Be Common in the End Times The End Time The greatest hope of those who have put their faith in the salvation that God gives through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is that we will one day see Him return to earth in His full glory. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew chapter 24 verses 42 and 44 The Lord went on to say that a major feature that will characterize the end of time is the abundance of iniquity. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Matthew chapter 24 verses 10 through 12. Many people will take offense at the things of the kingdom of God because they will be contrary to their selfish desires. Many false prophets will rise to say what the people are comfortable with, not the truth. Even fervent believers will become cold in their walk with God because they will be constantly bombarded with terrible situations. Sin will trap many as the lines between right and wrong will become very faint. Signs of the Beginning of the End Times Most people are usually curious about the future and have a strong desire to know what next will happen in the world around us. Thankfully, while he was here on the earth, the disciples of Jesus asked him what the signs of the end will be, and he mentioned some. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, Matthew chapter 24 verses 3 through 8. However, many years after our Lord left the world, Paul had a revelation of many sins that will be prevalent in the end times, and in his letter to his protege Timothy, he noted them. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 We can group these sins into eight categories if we want to capture what will be commonplace in the end times. Number 1. Intense Selfishness This includes covetousness, love for oneself, and pleasure. Selfishness is a core attribute of the devil, and this is why he stirred up contention against the authority of God in heaven. All he focused on was himself. 
For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 through 14 This deep-rooted selfishness was evident in the life of the rich fool. This man is famous for deciding to lavish all his wealth on only himself. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Luke chapter 12 verses 16 through 20 In the end times, there will be a great manifestation of narcissistic behavior as people become extremely self-centered. Compassion will take the back burner as each one will be fully focused on himself. Number two fierce, heady, and high-minded. This refers to a heart that loves to be stubborn. Sadly, stubbornness has a way of derailing people. One thing that the Lord couldn't stand from his children as they left Egypt was their stubbornness. They are often referred to as stiff-necked people. Stubbornness is a deliberate and constant refusal to obey God's instructions. In fact, the psalmist refers to stubborn people as those who are rebellious and says their spirits are not steadfast with God and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Psalm chapter 78 verse 8 in the end times, this rebellion will be so obvious, especially as people focus on their increased knowledge or discoveries. They will deliberately live in a way that is independent of God's word. Number three, ingratitude. Ingratitude is like a damp covering that spoils important items. Ingratitude is choosing not to acknowledge anything that God has done in our lives. This is a dangerous way to live, because we are all products of His mercy and faithfulness. There is nothing we have that can ever pay back for God's boundless grace towards us. Therefore, we owe Him our heartfelt and genuine thanks. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 But in the end times, people will find it difficult to appreciate the tangible or intangible things that add beauty to life. Gradually, if we are not careful, an overestimation of our personality will cause gratitude to dissipate. Number 4. Despisers of those that are good. This includes traitors and those that are unholy. It will be a time where those doing wrong will look like they are in the majority. But we know that numbers do not always equal normalcy. 
Evil will have a field day, as people will do whatever they think is right by their own standards instead of their creator's standard. The people who insist on the right thing will then be scarce and ridiculed. This will lead to an increase in persecution, as those who do not conform to widely accepted norms will be punished for their godly convictions. Number 5. Truce Breakers The Bible tells us that our yes should be yes, and our no should be no. But at the end, many will take pleasure in violating promises, agreements, and covenants without feeling any remorse. This is usually a result of lack of self-control. An important part of walking with God is learning order. Because everything made by God have their times, places, and seasons. But for those who love sin, nothing is sacred, as they don't know the value of mutual consideration. Number 6. Boasters and False Accusers while writing to the Romans, Apostle Paul admonished them not to think of themselves more highly than they actually are. Humility is necessary for anyone who wants to have a great relationship with God. It is important to remain small in our own eyes, because it is the secret to attaining great heights in life. However, in the end times, men will be proud, arrogant, and have over bloated egos. Self-importance will be emphasized, and those who do not walk in the same lines will be maligned and falsely accused. Number 7. Without Natural Affection God's greatest gift to us came from a place of love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16 And because he first loved us, he commands us to love one another. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. John chapter 15 verse 12 So, Hating one another clearly goes contrary to God's will. Unfortunately, this will be prevalent in the end times, as people begin to seek independence from God and His authority over their lives. Number 8. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Hypocrisy will only make us look godly on the outside, while sin and decay multiplies on the inside. The sad thing will be that many who commit sins will still act like they are children of God, but this will be in words only. The scriptures say they will give the right impression, but their hearts are really far away from Him. God's counsel for us concerning these people is to flee from them. This is timely counsel, because signs of His coming have started to unfold right before our eyes. A King's Return The joyful truth about the end of age and Christ's imminent return is that it has strengthened believers for centuries. In fact, it has served as an anchor for those persecuted for their faith. This promise was cemented after Jesus ascended into heaven, as the angels assured the worried disciples that he was definitely going to return. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? 
This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. Paul also confirmed that the end of age will climax with the return of Christ. He did this in his letter to the Thessalonians. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 17 Jesus Christ is coming back again, and that will always be great news for those that believe in him. That is because he is coming to take those who have trusted in his saving power. It won't matter if they are alive at his return or if they have slept in the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John chapter 14 verses 1 through 3. This is what is commonly referred to as the rapture of the saints. It is time for true believers to sincerely submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and actively lean on the ministry of the Holy Spirit because the devil wants as many sinful lives as he can get. On our own, we cannot withstand the deceptions and onslaught of the devil, but by God's strength, we will prevail. We must take heed to the Bible and live by it daily, so that we will not be overtaken by the subtlety of the enemy. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for the grace that brought us salvation and for your hands that keep us in your love. Please sustain us by your power, even in these dark times, and do not allow the devil to overrun us with his wiles. Help us not to let down our guards or give him any room to manipulate our lives. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed.